Welcome to another video of the Willow Creek Railroad. I'm Rod Vance, and I'm superintendent of the Willow Creek. The first layout tour video I did was filmed in 2015. In 2017, I did a brief video showing updates that had been made to the layout since then. Fast forward now to 2021. Based on viewer feedback, I decided to film this new layout tour video. And I decided to introduce it in person for something different. In this video, you'll not only get a comprehensive tour of the Willow Creek, but I'll also give you a brief look into the layout's history. You'll also see detailed track diagrams of each major location on the layout to help with your orientation during the tour. And finally, I don't believe any layout is perfect. So as part of the tour, I'll note a few things about the Willow Creek that maybe didn't turn out as planned or that I'd change if I were doing things over. Okay, you've seen enough of me. So sit back now and enjoy this 2021 tour of the Willow Creek. Let's start by viewing a set of video clips that provide an overview of the Willow Creek. The scenery on the layout was designed so that the entire layout could not be viewed from any single vantage point. You have to walk around the layout to view it in its entirety. The layout in the main train room measures 400 square feet. An adjacent workroom houses the Spokane staging yard, which is approximately 11 square feet. The layout has a maximum 2% grade, and the physical length of the track route from Waverly to the Spokane Staging Yard is approximately 227 feet. The track runs from a height of 41 inches to 53 inches above the train room floor. The layout operates using MRC's Prodigy Wireless DCC system, supported by an 8 amp booster. The layout is divided into six power subdistricts, each protected by a DCC Specialties PSX or PSX-AR circuit breaker. All turnouts are powered by Tortoise by Circuitron switch motors, which are activated by toggle switches located on the fascia. During operating sessions, the main layout is supported by a crew comprised of a dispatcher, two yard masters, and three or four road engineers. Each session is further supported by a car card and waybill system, modified train orders, a timetable, and a wireless fast clock system using both digital and analog clocks. Before we start our detailed tour, let's talk briefly about history. Whether your layout is based on a prototype or freelance like the Willow Creek, an historical context helps give the layout a sense of purpose. The layout's history starts with Bucky's Crossing, which was established in 1864 by Bucky Stewart as a ferry crossing for covered wagons. Stewart, an innovative businessman, helped establish the town that today bears his name, Bucky's Crossing. The ferry cut several miles and days off the wagon route. Wagons originally had to travel upstream to ford the Naugatuck River where an island is located, which made the crossing tolerable, albeit still dangerous due to the unpredictable flow and depth of the river. Despite Stewart's Ferry, the wagon route from the city of Waverly over the mountain passes to Bucky's Crossing remained difficult. The Willow Creek Railroad was established in 1891 and was built to connect Bucky's Crossing to Waverly and service the growing communities along the route. The railroad also established rail car ferry service and passenger steam ferry service at Bucky's Crossing to the river ports of Alta and Concord. The Willow Creek was acquired by the Union Pacific Railroad in 1915 and designated as the Willow Creek Subdivision. Shortly thereafter, the Union Pacific completed a connection eastward to Spokane, a major transportation hub and interchange with other Class I railroads throughout the U.S. The current time period is the early 1950s, and the Willow Creek is in the transition era, operating both steam engines and diesel locomotives. That's the freelance history of the Willow Creek. Now let's talk about actual history of the layout's construction. 
Planning for the Willow Creek began in 2007, with plans drawn full scale on craft paper, including paper copies of HO scale turnouts. Actual construction began in early 2009. Track routes were cut from the craft paper and used as templates to cut three-quarter inch plywood for the subroad bed. Benchwork was built using L-girder construction with risers and cleats supporting the subroad bed. All subroad bed was completed by May 2009. Cork roadbed was installed, followed by Code 83 flex track. 12 gauge wire was run for the DCC buses with feeders provided to every section of track and every turnout. By February 2010, all track and wiring were completed. Cardboard webbing was installed to support hard shell scenery. Note the photo of me standing upright inside the tallest mountain on the layout, installing cardboard webbing. I'm 5 feet 10 inches tall, so that gives you some idea of the height of the scenery. By May 2010, all webbing was completed. After that, plaster cloth was draped over the webbing, followed by a thin coat of plaster. By July 2010, the hard shell plaster base was finished. The plaster base was painted an earth tone. Then the focus over the next couple of years was on scenery. In March 2013, the automated block signaling system was installed. And the Nogatuck River was completed in September of that same year, with 10 coats of Mod Podge applied to the river using a bot brush. Don't ask me why, but backdrops were not originally planned for the Willow Creek. That oversight was corrected in 2013 when my wife Patty hand painted approximately 56 linear feet of backdrop. Installation of the painted backdrop was completed in late 2013. Waverly Yard, the last area on the layout to be scenic, was completed in December 2013. In December 2014, the 3D backdrop for Waverly Yard was completed. At this point, the layout as designed was complete. But as we all know, a layout is never truly finished. As I learned more about the important role that a staging yard plays in operations, I designed and built the Spokane Staging Yard, completing it in January 2017. Changes in the track plan for Glacier Valley and the new Willow Creek Junction were completed in December 2018, providing a better point-to-point -point operating scheme. In April 2020, an Arduino was installed to control the Highland Loop block signals. And in February 2021, the new SPNS interchange siding at Summit Springs was completed. That brings you up to date, but who knows what the next enhancement will be. Now that you know the history of the Willow Creek, let's get ready to tour the layout. 
Here's the track plan for the Willow Creek, located in the main train room and an adjacent workroom. Our tour will take us from Waverly Yard to the Spokane Staging Yard. These are the major locations on the layout, which we'll visit in detail shortly. From an operational perspective, our tour will take us from one end of the railroad to the other. This elevation diagram will give you some idea of the changing terrain that we'll be passing through. We'll start our tour in Waverly, then proceed up the 2% grade to Summit Springs. From Summit Springs, we'll descend down to Bucky's Crossing. And finally, we'll proceed to the Spokane Staging Yard, a track distance of approximately 227 feet from our starting point in Waverly. We'll start our tour in Waverly Yard, highlighted here in yellow. Waverly is situated at an elevation of 46 inches above the train room floor. As with every location we visit today, we'll start by looking at the track diagram. Waverly is accessed from the main line at Waverly Junction. The yard includes two arrival tracks and two departure tracks, a caboose track, and a four-track classification yard. There's a large passenger station and several industries and railroad facilities that are serviced by the yard. Since we're in the transition era, the yard has servicing facilities for both steam and diesel motive power. There's also an icing facility since ice bunker refrigerator cars will remain the standard for several more years. We'll be traveling today with the superintendent, who has scheduled the subdivision's gas electric rail motor car to pick us up at the passenger station and take us on our tour. We have time before we depart, so let's take a look around the yard. Waverly Yard includes a large engine servicing facility supporting both steam and diesel motive power. We have a six stall roundhouse with a 90 foot turntable, a large coaling tower, water columns fed from the large water tank, sanding towers for both steam and diesel locomotives, and a diesel fueling station. The yard supports both passenger and freight operations. The Union Pacific Passenger Station sits adjacent to a large train shed. The freight yard includes two arrival tracks with an adjacent caboose servicing track and two departure tracks. There's a four-track classification yard where cars are sorted by destination. And an adjacent icing facility for reefers. We have a yard office and storage shed. And a two-story tower overlooking the classification yard. On the far side of the yard, we have an industrial area with several companies serviced by the yard, including the railroad's commissary building, supporting passenger operations and express freight services. And finally, we have the local rail yard cafe. So that completes our tour of Waverly Yard. I see that the morning River City Limited has departed the station, so it's about time for us to board the motor car to continue our tour. We bid farewell to Waverly and make our way out of the yard. Our next stop will be Summit Springs. The superintendent has given us a handy dandy track plan so we can see the route of our tour. We just left Waverly Yard and we'll head up the 2% grade, crossing Sarlat Viaduct and then Laytaw Pass. When we arrive at Lookout Pass, we'll run around the reversing loop, cross High Bridge, and then back into the passenger station at Summit Springs. We pass the tower at Waverly Junction as our motor car joins the main line. We cross Sarlat Viaduct, a 240 foot long stone viaduct, and head towards the mountains.
The red signal ahead indicates that the block in front of us is not clear. So we stop our motor car on the passing siding and wait for a green signal. Now's a good time to talk about one of the problems with the design of the current layout. The Willow Creek was designed based on my understanding of operations at the time. So what you have is a layout originally designed for continuous running. Once I gained experience with formal operations, the Willow Creek was adjusted to accommodate point-to-point -point operations as much as possible. But with the reversing loop at Summit Springs, trains are still required to repeat the stretch of track from Waverly Junction to Summit Springs. Definitely not the most desirable track plan. I developed a revised plan that would focus on point-to-point -point operations, but still accommodate continuous running when desired. The idea would be to add an additional track outside of the current track between Waverly Junction and Summit Springs, as shown here in red. This revision would position Waverly Yard as a true terminus to the point-to-point -point operating scheme. This revision, however, would require about six more inches of space along the back wall by Upper Meadows and would require significant scenery rework. For these reasons, I'll be happy with the current design of the Willow Creek and this revision will probably only remain on paper. But it's still fun to dream. Okay, it looks like the green block signal was for this local freight led by an Alco RS2. After it clears the block and we get a green signal, we'll be on our way. Crossing Laytaw Pass affords us a great view of Mount Rainier in the distance. We emerge from the tunnel through Schomburg Peak and finally arrive at Lookout Pass. Our motor car crosses Matesi Bridge, named after the superintendent's maternal grandfather. Next comes High Bridge, a 210 foot long curved steel viaduct sitting 83 feet above the gorge. It's amazing that the vibrations of the viaduct don't seem to bother the group of resting pigeons. We pass the SPNS interchange track where several cars are waiting to be picked up. At the Summit Springs Junction, our motor car stops and then backs through the tunnel into Summit Springs. It's a gorgeous day in the mountains as our motor car arrives at the local passenger station. Welcome to Summit Springs, known for its natural spring water and mineral hot springs. Summit Springs is the highest track elevation on the Willow Creek, sitting 53 inches above the train room floor. You saw Lookout Pass, High Bridge, and the SPNS Interchange as we were arriving. Next to the passenger station is the Freight House, which does a booming business in less than carload freight. Baden Spa Inn and Pub draws a lot of tourists to Summit Springs. Rail-served industries include the Bottling Company and the Summit Springs plant of the Seattle Brewing and Malting Company. The Bottling Company bottles the local spring water, as well as various spirits brought in bulk by rail. And the Seattle Brewing Company is known especially for its Rainier beer. The Baden Resort is lively and seems to be always packed with tourists. Summit Springs is nestled against the cliffs of Mount Summit and Rocky Ridge and is a key destination for hikers. The trails are steep, but the flora and fauna make the trip well worthwhile. The mountains are full of moose, bear, and other wildlife.
It's been nice to stretch our legs and breathe in the fresh mountain air, but it's time for us to continue our tour. Back on board our motor car, our driver signals our departure and we head out of Summit Springs. Next stop, Upper Meadows. Our map shows us heading down the 2% grade on the other side of the pass and arriving at Upper Meadows. Upper Meadows sits along the back wall of the train room at an elevation of 49 inches above the floor. The Richter Vinegar and Pickle Company is the sole industry here and a small passenger station. Just beyond Upper Meadows is the picturesque Sarlat Viaduct. We pass through the Mount Laytaw Tunnel and arrive in Upper Meadows. We'll stop at the passenger station and look around the area. By the way, when I build Upper Meadows, I failed to recognize that trains switching the area would need to stop on the track by the station, which sits on a 2% grade. The trainman holding the lantern marks the location where a tortoise switch machine pin can be activated to serve as a car brake while the switch engine works the Richter Vinegar Company track. The Richter Vinegar and Pickle Company includes a salting station for making pickles, a vinegar generator building on the left, and the pickle processing building on the right. The Vinegar Company is nestled against Mount Laytaw which supports several herds of deer. And of course, there's the cabin and camper situated high in the mountains, all of which are end scale to force the perspective of being far away. We reboard the motor car and check our tour map before departing. We'll cross Sarlat Viaduct, pass Highland Falls and Lake Sycamore, cross the Highland Loop Trestle, and arrive in Highland, where we'll have lunch. Highland sits at an elevation of 46 inches, where the track loops around Tico Ridge. Highland is dominated by the Willow Creek Mining Company and a small community of miners' houses. The motor car finally signals our departure, and we're off to Highland. The block signal at the end of Sarlat Viaduct is showing red, so we stop to await oncoming traffic. The traffic finally shows up, but it's not quite what we expected. The railroad's track inspection sedan zips past us and heads across the viaduct. Remember, it's important to keep the fun in model railroading. With the block clear, it's our turn to proceed. We pass Highland Falls on our right, and our driver gives a couple of friendly toots to some of the local non-revenue paying passengers who frequent the subdivision. We next cross Highland Loop Trestle, a 215-foot curved wooden trestle standing 75 feet above a dry canyon. This is a scratch-built trestle using 454 individually cut wooden pieces. And as an added fun factor, the trestle includes 170 nut bolt washer castings. Remember, this hobby is all about the fun. Our motor car passes three mining company houses and stops alongside the block signal. The dispatcher has authorized us to occupy the main here while we visit Highland. 
The mining company houses sit right next to the tracks. And the families have invited us to join them for a barbecue. That is, unless the dog gets our lunch first. The mining company is an active industry. This is an underground mine with the head house located on the mountainside above the tipple. Island is also known for its hiking. In fact, a group of hikers are taking a break on the hillside above us to watch our motor car. Trails can be found on both sides of Tico Ridge. You'll even find a set of N-scale hikers to again force the perspective of them being far away up in the mountains. A passenger shelter sits at the head of Willow Creek and is a flag stop used by hikers. Having enjoyed a nice lunch break, we grab our seat in the motor car and check our tour map. When we leave Highland, we'll parallel Willow Creek on our way down to Glacier Valley. Glacier Valley sits at an elevation of 41 inches and is the location of an important interlocking tower controlling the crossing of tracks into and out of the river port of Bucky's Crossing. Glacier Valley is the entrance to the lower reversing loop on the layout. At the sound of the horn, our motor car departs Highland. We pass the small passenger shelter and have views of Willow Creek out the left side of our car. Above us on the mountain, if you look carefully, you'll see a hunter who's been caught in a rather precarious situation. We come to Willow Creek Junction and stop at the red yard signal. Because we're just a little bit behind schedule, the dispatcher has authorized an empty hopper train from Spokane to pass through the interlock ahead of us. Once he's gone and we get a green yard signal, we proceed towards the interlock. We cross over South Forks River, which is busy with fishermen and boaters. At Glacier Valley, our route takes us to the right, which is the long way around the reversing loop. Glacier Valley includes the interlocking tower and an old dilapidated shed, plus the signals, and that's it. As the tour map shows, our route goes through a long tunnel behind Bucky's Crossing and emerges across a low wooden trestle over a marsh. After another short tunnel, we finally break into the open along the shore of the Naugatuck River. Bucky's Crossing is the centerpiece of the layout and a busy river port during operating sessions. Sitting at an elevation of 41 inches, this is the lowest track point on the layout. A two-track car float is docked along the Naugatuck River, supported by a three-track yard. Bucky's Crossing includes a large passenger station and a water tank for servicing steam locomotives. There's a wonderful assortment of retail establishments in the downtown area and several more in what's known as the East Portal area. The East End also includes three rail-served industries supported by the local yardmaster. Our motor car has been in the long tunnel for quite some time, so we're glad when we emerge to cross the wooden marsh trestle. We emerge from the final tunnel and follow the shoreline of the Naugatuck River to Bucky's Crossing. The 
Yardmaster brings us in on the interstation track, since the earlier hopper train is still sitting on the outer track. Our motor car parks at the busy passenger station. The focus of activity in Bucky's Crossing is on the river, with the car float and a steam passenger ferry. Car float operations are supported by the three-track yard located on the front of the layout. The downtown area of Bucky's Crossing is a favorite for locals and tourists alike, with an ice cream parlor, bakery, clothing and gift shops, a great Italian restaurant, the Riverfront Hotel, a tobacco store, barbershop, and newsstand. The east end of town includes a garage station, Blue Star Freight Company, Fenster's Wholesale Produce, Whiting Oil, a bookstore, a pharmacy, and a small grocery store. There's definitely a lot going on in Bucky's Crossing. We enjoy dinner at the Italian restaurant, have some ice cream for dessert, and then grab a few donuts to take with us on the motor car. We reboard our motor car and check our tour map for the final leg of our journey. From Bucky's Crossing, we will depart to the east, heading towards the Spokane Staging Yard. Spokane is located in an adjacent workroom accessed by trains through a hole conveniently cut in the wall of the train room. Once again, our driver signals departure and we head out of Bucky's Crossing. We've enjoyed our tour, but it's been a long day and we're looking forward to our arrival in Spokane. We pass through Glacier Valley and head up the staging yard access track. The tunnel portal indicates our departure from the main layout in the train room. The 8-foot access track brings us into the Spokane Staging Yard and the end of our journey. No scenery here, just trains, but that's what a staging yard is all about. Allow me to share some of my philosophy. I consider model railroading to be a journey a fascinating and never-ending adventure to create a miniature world focused on the railroad. For me, the purpose of the journey is to master the art of model railroading in all of its many aspects, although one honestly never expects to fully achieve this goal. The adventure is one of continuous learning. There's always something new to challenge the model railroader. The Willow Creek layout is the context of my journey. It is a multi-dimensional canvas upon which I continually work to master this hobby. The layout is always changing and will never truly be finished. 
At any time, I can take a snapshot of the miniature world and be very pleased with the current results. Yet there's always something that can be added or improved, and this challenges me to continuously enhance my model railroading expertise. This layout tour video captures the history of the Willow Creek and provides a snapshot of the layout as of June 2021. While the railroad will change, its current maturity is to be celebrated. This video was created in part to document a journey taken and to acknowledge a dream realized. I hope that you've enjoyed this layout tour video. And as always, thank you for visiting the Willow Creek.